Hi everyone, I'm Ian, and today we're going to program an Arduino using Rust. An Arduino is a microcontroller, which is just a very tiny computer designed for small, low-cost, and otherwise resource-constrained applications, like microwaves and air conditioners, robots, smart speakers, televisions. I think you get the picture. They're everywhere. They can receive input from their environment using sensors, buttons, and knobs, and interact with their environment with motors, lights, linear actuators, etc. They run software which orchestrates all of these things to do something useful or interesting. Now, I hope the gears of imagination are already turning as you're thinking about what you could do if only you knew how to use one of these things. An internet-connected toaster. A hat with a built-in personal fan that adjusts speed according to ambient temperature. On-demand, single-serving sausage cooker. Yes, it's almost lunchtime and the list is really endless. Now, if you've done any microcontroller programming in the past, chances are you've done it in C or C++. And that's great. These languages, particularly C, are ubiquitous in the microcontroller world. But these languages are very old. C is 53 years old, and a lot has changed since they were introduced. The technology of programming languages has improved a lot, and there's a new kid on the block. I'm not going to go into a thorough comparison of these two technologies. There are plenty of those out on the web. But for today, and for all of these videos, we're going to be working with Rust. Let's get started. So I am starting from a fresh install of Ubuntu 2404 desktop. So the first thing we need to do is open a terminal and we need to install Rust up. Then we need to install the nightly Rust compiler. And then we need to install a whole handful of other dependencies. Next up, we need to install a tool called RaveDude. Uh, RaveDude is a tool that lets Cargo run, uh, build your code, deploy it to the Arduino, and then run it. Uh, so now it's complaining that we don't have the stable version of the Rust compiler. So let's install that now. Okay, now let's go back and run our install rave dude command. Hopefully it should work flawlessly this time. Excellent. Next up, we're going to install cargo generate, which is a tool that creates templated projects for us. We're going to use one of those templates to give us a head start on setting up our project. Wow. So that took several minutes on my machine. So expect that to take a little while and be patient with it. Next up, we are going to actually use cargo generate to to build us a template project that we're going to work from. Uh, it's asking us to name our project. I'm going to name mine Blink. And here you're going to want to look at your actual Arduino that you're using today. Mine, which looks like this, is an Arduino Nano clone. It's not actually from Arduino. Um, but it, it has the same hardware. And so I'm going to select Nano, and there are two options for Nano here. There's Arduino Nano and Arduino Nano New Bootloader. If you try one and it doesn't work, you can go and use the other, but I know that mine works with the New Bootloader option. All right, and so now if I ls in here, I see I have a Blink directory that was created for me by that last command. I'm going to navigate in there. And now I need to interact with this code in some way. So I'm going to use a code editor. Uh, I'm going to install VS Code on my Ubuntu uh, machine here. And you're welcome to use uh, whichever code editor you prefer to do this. Code's really popular, which is why I'm using it today. And then to open VS Code with our project, we just type code, period, and press enter. And that should open a VS Code instance for us. Okay, so here we're looking at the contents of that project that was generated for us when we ran Cargo Generate with the AVR HAL template. For the purposes of getting that little light on the board to blink, you do not need to understand everything that's in this project. And I encourage you to learn as you go with this. That being said, let's do some of that learning now by talking through what is in this project. So in a new project, the first thing I'm gonna do is always visit the README. And there really isn't much in here. 
but that's because this is designed to be pretty easy to use. We're mostly concerned with the build instructions section, and we've already completed step one, which is to install the prerequisites. Step two tells us how to build our project, and step three tells us how to flash our project onto our board and run it. We won't be using step four in this video today, but we will make use of it in more complicated projects in the future. So our code is going to live in the source directory in the main.rs file. There's already some code here that came free with the template, which is very helpful. Let's figure out what it does. On line one, no STD tells the compiler not to link the standard library, STD, because most of the functionality in the standard library doesn't really make sense in an embedded context. No main similarly tells the compiler that we are forgoing the standard main function in favor of a more customized and board specific entry point. In this case, that entry point is specified on line six and provided by the Arduino HAL crate. Panic halt is a crate that defines panic behavior that makes sense on a microcontroller. And that behavior is just to halt the processor. Line four brings the panic halt implementation into context. Now let's get into some actual logic. On line eight, we see this peripherals take line. The microcontrollers define peripherals as a way to interact with the outside world. In this case, we want to interact with the pins that control the LED we're trying to flash. So we'll definitely need that. Line nine calls the macro pins to properly configure the pins so that we can interact with them. Line 21 configures pin 13, which is the pin that controls the LED onboard our Arduino and configures it as an output pin. Output pins are pins that we will set the value of to control something like a light. And input pins are pins we will get the value of to detect something. Many of the physical pins on our board can operate as either input or output. But once your project circuit is assembled, it rarely makes sense to switch between them. This line, line 21, allows the compiler to check our code and make sure that we don't accidentally try to use that pin for input without explicitly calling a similar function to convert it into an input pin. Now we're in the main loop of our code. Virtually all embedded software has an infinite loop in main that runs and runs and runs forever until someone powers off the board. Remember, there's not an operating system on our little microcontroller. So our program needs to be running continuously to flash our LED or in more complex projects to respond to sensor input, etc. Within that loop, there are two little lines of code. LED.toggle, which toggles our input pin from high to low or from low to high. If the pin is high, the light comes on. If the pin is low, the light is off. After toggling the LED, we call delay milliseconds 1000, which will cause the processor to wait for 1000 milliseconds or one second before it toggles again. Without this line, the LED would flash much faster than our eyes could see it. So this program is complete, but there's one little problem. You see, most Arduino boards actually come preloaded with software that does exactly this. It toggles the onboard LED at one second intervals. But we want to make sure that when we flash our code onto the board, that it's our software that makes the flashing light, not the preloaded software. So I'm going to change the interval to something else, something shorter, like 200 milliseconds. So we know that our blinking light is not just any old blinking light, it's our blinking light. And now our code should be complete. Now let's flash it onto our board. First, we need to locate our board on the system. And to do that, I am going to open a terminal. Okay, so there are many ways to detect where our board is located on the system. But my favorite is to just plug in your device and then run this command and inspect the output for something that looks like our board. I don't see anything that looks like our board, so I think my virtual machine does not have access to the USB port. I need to restart my VM. Okay, so now that I have restarted my VM, let's see if I have access. So I'm going to get back into code. Okay, so after a couple iterations of unplugging, replugging in my board and running dmessage, I see an output that has the name of my board in it, FT232R. That is the, the type of board that I have. And what we're looking for here is this little nugget, TTY USB 
zero. Yours may have a different number after USB, or it may look like TTYACM and then a number, um, but this is the piece of information we need in order to connect to our board. So now we're going to set an environment variable that points to that board. And the name of the board port follows slash dev slash. So export rave dude port equals slash dev slash TTY USB zero. And we're going to hit enter on that. And then we're going to run cargo run. And if all goes well, this should flash our program onto our microcontroller and we should see a rapidly flashing light to show us that everything worked. Yeah. So there you have it, an Arduino with a rapidly flashing light powered by the coolest language and systems programming. Rust on microcontrollers is still growing, so admittedly there is more complexity here than using the relatively plug-and-play Arduino IDE. Even though this is a very simple project, there were a lot of pieces that lined up to get it to work right. Now that we have a working setup, I look forward to reusing that setup for increasingly complex projects. With buttons and gadgets and gizmos, remember that on-demand sausage cooker? If your project did not work the way mine did, please don't give up. Overcoming these obstacles and building a working project gives a sense of satisfaction that makes it all worth it. If you enjoyed this video and want to build more embedded projects, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.